Even though it's Thanksgiving, the research must continue on. Oceanographers with the Center for Microbial Oceanography Research and Education will spend the next 16 hours collecting data and sampling the ocean at Station 2, 380 nautical miles off the coast of Chile. Researchers will take a well-needed break and enjoy a turkey dinner, compliments of the great chefs on board the RV Melville. Before dinner, I caught up with Sasha Tozzi, a scientist from the University of California at Santa Cruz. He's studying one of the most important processes on the planet, photosynthesis. So one of the things we're doing out here is studying photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is a very, very important process on our planet. The reason is, is that it's the process by which all the oxygen we breathe is produced. And half of that oxygen is produced actually in the ocean. And in the ocean, the organisms that are producing the oxygen is phytoplankton. Phytoplankton are small algae that float in the ocean. Now, the way they produce the oxygen is by absorbing carbon dioxide, utilizing the sunlight energy and uh, food as nutrient like nitrogen and phosphorus to then produce sugars. And these sugars are utilized to build up body mass, grow, and then duplicate. Uh, as part of the photosynthetic process, phytoplankton utilizes CO2. And so we are very interested in this aspect of photosynthesis. Uh, given that there is many live evidence that there is a rapid increase of CO2 in the atmosphere and in the ocean. Two of these line of evidence come from Hawaii where for many, many decades uh, CO2 concentration has been measured in the atmosphere and this is a big concern because CO2 is a greenhouse gas and that leads to an increase in temperature on our planet. Now all this CO2 in the in this CO2 in the atmosphere, it gets up, part of this gets absorbed by the ocean, and what that leads to is an increase of acidity of the ocean and a decrease of pH. This is also very concerning for us because there's a lot of organisms that don't do well at this increased acidity. For example, all those organisms that have calcareous shells as corals and in the phytoplankton family, uh, coccolithophores. So, because we are so concerned of the high CO2 concentration in the atmosphere and the ocean, we are performing here on board an experiment in which we test the effects of the high CO2. The way we do it is we collect large volume of water and we expose half of it at current CO2 concentration and half of it we bubble it with the CO2 concentration double of the current concentration. That is the amount that is predicted to be in 100 years from now. And what we do then with the water, we collect water daily and we look at the photosynthetic rates. The way we do it is by utilizing an instrument called the fast repetition rate ferrometer. This instrument looks at the way that the phytoplankton uh, utilize the light, how efficiently they utilize the light, and indirectly tells us how efficiently they can utilize the carbon dioxide and uh, produce the oxygen. And I'm really excited to see the results from this first experiment and from the next two experiments. The reason is that uh, for each experiment, I will be collecting water from different uh, region of the ocean and different distance from the coast. These experiments will shed some light on how the different populations of photosynthetic microorganisms along our cruise track are affected by the increase in carbon dioxide. Tonight around midnight, we will depart Station 2 in transit for another 36 hours before reaching Station 3. Stay tuned for more Big Rapa updates.